gonna work. I think it's this one right here. All right, hi everyone. I was trying to get my phone fixed since Facebook updated. It is not the same. How is everyone tonight? Happy Monday. Monday it is. Ooh, a little crazy. That wind was windy today out there. <laughs> we had recess outside and then after school it was windy. How is everybody today? Hi Shauna and Debbie. Did everyone have a good weekend? We had a busy weekend. Let's see if I can get some comments rolling over here. We painted our garage this weekend, so we were busy. Lots of painting. Thank you for sprinkling, Kimberly. And hi, Rita. I'm trying to see comments. Oh, there I have some. I have eyeballs over here. All right, so we are gonna do, I sent a survey out. Hi, Denise. Um, to see what kind of crafts you guys want to see because I know October you're probably not putting out too many more fall crafts because everybody puts them out in September and now we're starting to think about buying gifts for Christmas possibly so this um, craft actually is from that I saw on Facebook and it's originally from another crafter I wrote her page down because I messaged her I saw it I said, oh, this is so cute, I have to try this. And she said that, um, I asked her if I could make it on my page and with a little spin on it, because I was, I don't have the same exact supplies as she does. So I asked her if I could make it and she said, yes, that would be awesome. And I told her I would totally give her credit for it. So it was getting plastered with Jerry. So if you check out her page, she, makes the same craft a little bit different in a different way. So you can check out how she made it too. So the idea originally came from her, getting plastered with Jerry. Um, I think you can find her on Craft Around the Clock. So go check her out and see how she made hers. After I'm done, if you wanna see how we did it differently, you might have the supplies that she had and not have everything that I have. So there'll be a couple different options for you. Hi Stella and Dee and Catherine and Cindy and my brothers out there. Okay, let's get rolling. So the first thing I am starting with are five gallon paint sticks. And I think I just used two, right? One, two, I might have had three. Three paint sticks, yes. Three five gallon paint sticks and I cut them in half. So cut it right at the 10 and a half mark. So then I have two pieces. I kept the handle piece. I used the handle piece. Where she did not, I did because I didn't have enough paint sticks. So I had to use it and it turned out cute. So we are using that. Let me see here. Oh, this is the one I want. So we are going to stain them. So here's what it looked like when I first cut it. And then I just 45 the handles. I kept two of the handles and I just 45 this in and 45, cut them at a 45 degree angle. So they look like that. So we're gonna use two of those and then the other end of the paint stick. And I think that's all I need. I stained some of them ahead of time. And then I had a regular paint stick and I just needed a little piece of that one. And this one was cut at seven and three quarters. So this one's seven and, a, seven and three quarters. And then I used a garden stake, just plain old garden stake. And I cut two pieces at seven and three quarters also. So, and I can put all those measurements in the comments later if you would like the measurements. So we have the one regular paint stick at seven and three quarters and then two of the garden stakes at seven and three quarters. Mary Lou, aw, thanks. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna put a real quick coat of Waverly Antique Wax. We're gonna stain it with this. It's easier if you use real stain. Hot glue doesn't always work the greatest on real stain. Um, or you have to stain it and then you can hot glue. This just works really easy for me and it doesn't smell. I can use it in here. So I always use my antique Waverly wax. Can you guys hear me okay? Because when I first plugged in my microphone, 
tonight for the first time it said it was not supported by my iPhone and that's never happened before. So let me know if you can hear me okay. Hi Robin and Jackie and Terry. We'll try to catch up on some comments. So I'm just gonna stain the side that does not have the numbers on it. You know how paint sticks have like a ruler on one side? I'm not gonna stain that side. And I'm just using a foam brush. And just putting a quick coat of this wax on here and then I'm gonna wipe it off. Take a paper towel, just wipe off all the excess, just like that. Okay, do the next one. I saw this craft and she did such a good job and it will make a really cute Christmas gift. So I wanted to show you guys if you hadn't seen it on her page and then you can make them, start making them now to give as Christmas gifts. Because they're super simple. So far, the only thing you need is paint sticks, and then I'll show you the rest of the supplies. You don't need too many supplies. You can hear me fine. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Yeah, it's never said that before. Oh, great, here we go. <laughs> My microphone is not gonna work, and I already talk quiet as it is. <laughs> I had after school duty um, for second load bus duty today, and there's so many kids in there. And you know, it's the end of school and they're tired and they're a little wound up and so they're a little noisy. And I cannot yell very loud at all when I have to call the bus numbers when the buses arrive. So the other teacher that's in there with me, she had to call the bus numbers out because <laughs> I just do not have a loud voice. I have not learned to yell from my belly <laughs> or my diaphragm or wherever you yell from. Don't have it. Don't have that teacher voice. Okay, one more. Just our regular paint stick. I'm getting a mess all over my hands. I'm getting the edges. I did um, stain all four sides of the garden stake. I didn't say that but I'm just staining the top of the paint sticks that don't have the numbers and then the sides. I'm not gonna worry about the back. You can stain the whole thing if you want. Okay, let's get that out of the way. We're done with that. Get a wipey here, get most of this stuff off my hand. I got enough for both of us, LOL. <laughs> yeah, you have a louder voice than me. <laughs> My brother got it all. <laughs> I don't know why, I just can't, can't yell. <laughs> okay, let's get this out of the way, all this mess, and then we'll put this cute craft together. I know you're excited to see what it is. <laughs> it's actually, it's a Christmas sled, so I'm super excited. I love a sled and you can leave it out in the winter. You don't have to leave it just for Christmas. Okay, so we're gonna use wreath hangers, two of them. I got these from Dollar Tree, so two bucks. These are gonna be the rungs of the sled. And so take the tag off the top. Hi, Brandy, I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good for Monday. It's Monday and it was rainy here, but not too bad. Okay, so now on the hanger, you have the, the wreath hanger, you have the square part that hangs over the door. We are going to take that part off. Now, um, Jerry from Getting Plastered with Jerry, she, she just bent hers out and straightened it out, but I took mine all the way off. So I just bent it up and it did it pretty easy on the other one, right at the crease. I just bent it up and then back down a couple times Kept working it until it just pops right off. So not too hard at all. So then it looks like that. So you need two of those. So I already took the end off of that one. Okay. Aw, thanks Felma. <laughs> I felt like I was a mess today, but thank you. Everybody likes these colors. I do like this dusty rose color. Okay, 
So now I have my mat underneath so it has some straight lines to help me keep everything in a straight line. So that's just a little tip because we're going to have a lot of boards on here. I'm going to start with my two garden stakes that I cut, seven and three quarters. And so that's going to be the width of my sled. And I'm going to put them one near the end. Let's line these up on the end of my board here. Let's actually do it at the bottom like that. We're going to put one about two inches from the end and then one about one, two, three inches from the top. I think that will work like that. Now she used um, paint sticks and then something different like little uh, Oh, I forgot what she called them. They look almost like wooden beads on hers. I did not have those supplies, so I'm using garden stakes. So we're using two pieces of garden stake, and then my regular paint stick is going right up at the top where the curved part of the rungs, I think that's what you call it, rungs of a sled, right there at the top like that. Okay, and then these are gonna help me keep my width too, cause seven and three quarters is how wide I want it. Let's make sure, now I have these boards. These are the um, five gallon paint sticks. Let's make sure those are placed. Yep, the garden stakes look good at two inches and three inches. So we're gonna glue those down. Let's start with this one. I'm just gonna put a, dot, a dab of hot glue there and there and then glue it down. Right on there, just like that. Okay, and then do this one. And it's so nice having, if you have some kind of a mat that has lines to help keep everything straight. Otherwise, you can just eyeball it. But when I do that, it tends to be a little crooked. <laughs> Slide that over just a smidge. Okay, and then we'll do the top one. Make sure I'm moving it around here. Let's move this one right up there on that line. Right up near the top. Okay, and then I'll hold that up and show you what it looks like so far. Hi, Teresa. What did everybody do this weekend? I saw lots of pumpkin patch pictures on Facebook. <laughs> it was a beautiful weekend to go to the pumpkin patch. We were in the garage painting, so not so fun. Oops, I need a little more hot glue on that one. Now you can use some E6000 too on there. And that will help hold everything together. So there's that. Too cute. Turn it sideways so you can see. And I'm wondering with this metal, if I need to put a little bit of E6000. I might. Let's grab it. E6000 does not um, dry quickly, so we use the hot glue for now, but then this will make it last, make it stick but it takes about 24 hours to completely set up. And here's what it is, E6000. Cause see, it, my wood is kind of popping off my metal already. So we're gonna put a little bit of this and hot glue down. If I can get it to come out of there. It's not wanting to come out and I'm afraid I'm gonna squeeze it and then it's gonna all come running out. It's coming out slow. Okay, let's see if I can get enough out of there. And you're only gonna need this for this part of it on the metal, because I just don't want those to pop off there. Look, they're popping off really easy. Did not plan for that. So we're gonna put some of this on there. <laughs> it's not wanting to come out. Rats, and I can feel it all in there, it's not dry. Spent Saturday in St. Genevieve just checking out the stores. Aw, that was a good day for that. 
Okay, E6000 on that one. That was a chore, not very easy. A little more hot glue with the E6000. <laughs> and then stick that right back on there. Let's see, one, two, three. From the top, three inches. And then we're gonna do the same on the other two. Now it might help to kind of sand the metal just a little if you don't have E6000. Okay, this one feels pretty good. It's stuck on there. And that one's stuck on there now. It was just this one. I think, oh, nope, that one's loose. Let's see if I can wiggle this one. Let's put some E6000 on those too. Hi, Anna. If you put some Vaseline on the top of the E6000 before you put the cap on, it's easier to get the glue to come out. Good tip. Catherine, I think you, you, I think you actually told me that before and I forgot. I just remembered that now that you said that, I think you were the one because <laughs> I had trouble last time. Okay, and then two inches from the bottom. There, now let's see if that works. Now that E6000 of course is not gonna set up, but it will be dry by tomorrow. Okay, good, now we got that part done. Let's put our five gallon paint sticks on there. So I'm gonna put one in the center and this will stick fine with hot glue because we're gluing the wood to the wood. So we're good now. And then another one that's just cut straight on both ends. I'm moving my stuff around here. And then another one, just straight cut on both ends. So we have three in the middle. And then the two handles that I cut. Oops, there they are. So there's the handle part right up there, and I just 45'd it. So we're gonna put that one, have the angle going inward this way, and then this one on this side. And then we'll spread these out evenly. Now you don't have to use the handle part. You can use just the straight edge parts and just angle it, but I didn't have an extra one, and it looks kind of cute with that little indention from the handle. Okay. Can you see what I got going on here so far? Too cute and so easy. These would make cute um, door hangers, Christmas gifts that you could give someone. Your outfit is so cute. Oh, thank you, Anna. <laughs> thank you. I, I just, I love the sweater. If you guys can't see it, it's really long. It goes like almost to the ground because I'm short, but it's meant to be really long. Okay, let's glue these down. Let's start on the ends. And then we'll work our way inward. Okay, we're gonna put some hot glue there and there. Oops, and line them up right. <laughs> Not way up there. And then we'll do this side. I always like to either start in the middle and work my way out or start on the outside and work my way in. In this case, we're going out toward in to make sure we get all the spacing good. I didn't want to end up with a lot of extra space on the outside. Hi, Dad. Okay, so now let's do the mid, well, nope, we're gonna keep going the way we are. Outward, in. Okay, put some hot glue on each one of those garden stakes. And you can use little spacers if you want. You could stick one of these other paint sticks in there as a spacer. That would work too if you are worried about the spacing. I'm not too worried, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Do this side. This is so simple, guys. I've spent so two dollars on the sled rungs, and then 
a pack of paint sticks, five gallon paint sticks, you get three in a pack for a dollar. So that's three dollars. And then I had to have a regular paint stick. So you have to buy the whole pack unless you get a free one in the paint department. So three dollars and some change. Oh, and the garden stake was a dollar. So four dollars is what we have in it so far. Really cheap and super cute. I'm going to invest in paint sticks. I know, can you buy stock in paint sticks? <laughs> I use a lot of paint sticks. <laughs> Bet your little students think they have a pretty... Aw, thanks, Mary. <laughs> Too sweet. <laughs> okay, now my E6000 is not all the way dry. But look at that. How cute is this? And so simple. You could hang it. I'm not done. <laughs> We're going to decorate it a little bit. But you could hang it on the door. We're going to hang a jute hanger on it. Or you can leave it sitting on your table for a table setting in the center. How cute, adorable. Okay, so now let's decorate it just a little bit. It's too funny <laughs> about investing in paint sticks. They're not very expensive, so I don't know how great an investment that would be, Dad. <laughs> all right, now my Christmas stuff is very limited right now because I have not gotten it all out of storage. So what I do have, I had some sprigs of greenery, so we're gonna use that. I did have some berries in a drawer that I found, so we're gonna use some berries. Had a little bit of those. And then I did have some Christmas ribbon. So this is the red and black buffalo check that I like at Christmas, so we're gonna use that. And this they had at Dollar Tree. I'm not using this, but I wanted to show you. Burlap ribbon, I bought that the other day. That's really cute with the holly leaves and berries on there. Super cute. Okay, so now we are going to just take, I'm gonna make a simple, simple bow tonight. Nothing fancy. I am just gonna take my ribbon and this is, let's see how many inches this is. I'm just gonna use this paint stick if I can see the numbers here. Yeah, it's about seven inches right here, six to seven inches, and I'm gonna fold it down just like that. And then I'm gonna fold the other side over. So I have about three inches on each side. So I folded it this way, and now I'm folding it this way. And now I'm gonna fold it back over this way again, and then just fold this end back over. Really simple bow, kind of like an accordion just keep folding them back and forth each side over and over. And then in the middle, we're gonna bunch it together, just like that. And then we're gonna spread it out and shape it. So I hope that makes sense. So you lay your ribbon out, fold one little piece over, and then fold it over. Keep folding back and forth until you use it all up, kind of like an accordion. And then a little piece of wire. We're gonna bunch it right in the middle. Just tie a piece or wrap a piece of wire around it. Hi, Carlita. I think I could make this super cute. It's super easy, Jen. Yeah, you could definitely make it. Okay, so now this does not look like much. Right now, we're going to spread it out. Fluff it just a little bit. This one is a super easy bow, simple. No twisting in it. Well, and you have to have ribbon like this though to do that folding back and forth so you don't have to twist it. It's double-sided. It doesn't matter which side it is. Now, if it's one-sided, you have to twist it. But if it's double-sided, you can just fold it over like I did. Okay, so we have a cute little bow. And then we're gonna take a short little piece for the middle. So I'm just gonna cut a little section like that and we're gonna wrap it. Let me tuck this tail, I don't want it. We're gonna tuck it underneath. We're just gonna wrap this right over top and hot glue it down. You can twist tie it on, you can use 
piece of um, wire. I'm just going to hot glue it down in the back. My fingers are stuck to that hot glue. Ow! <laughs> Did not put on my little finger protectors. Okay, now we're gonna scrunch this in the middle. I want it kind of scrunched and then shape my bow again. Get all this glue off of me. Okay. Really easy. Cute little bow. Simple. We're gonna use that up in the corner. Okay, and then we're going to use our little sprig. I think I'm going to put that on there. Just like that. Can you see that? And then little berries to tie in some more of the red. I think I'll wrap the berries around my sprig here because they have wire in them. Let's hot glue that sprig down. See if it will stay. Put a little hot glue right there. And then I'll probably hot glue just a little bit underneath. You can put the sprig in the middle. You could hang a wreath on it, whatever you want, however you want to decorate it. Rita, this, thank you so much. This is not my original idea. Um, Jerry from Getting Plastered with Jerry, she thought of this idea and she was so kind when I asked her if I could make it because I thought it was super cute and I wanted to show everyone if they hadn't seen it because these will make great Christmas gifts. And she said, yes, of course. So she's letting me take her idea and put my own spin on it. I didn't have all the same supplies as she did. So you guys see a couple different options of how you can make it. Scattered, aw, thanks Mary. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna glue this bow right on there. That'll work right there. Little glue there and there. You can wire all this stuff on for time purposes. Right now, we're just gonna hot glue it on. And then I thought it might be kind of cute. Like if you gave it as a gift, you could put an initial, hang their initial for, mine is N for Newton. So I'm gonna put a little N on there so you could put if you gave it to someone, put their initial. You could put a little plaque with their name on it. That would be really cute. So let's see. Let's hang it maybe right in there. I'm just going to hang some or wrap some jute rope around this. How do I want to do this? Let's do it like that. I think I'm going to put a little hot glue. I had to think about what I wanted it to look like. <laughs> little hot glue on the back and wrap it around a couple times here. Yes, that'll work. Put a little more hot glue. I just had a little wooden in in my tub of letters and I just painted it black and used a piece of sandpaper on the edges. But you could use an uh, in ornament, whatever you have. Like I said, a little plaque with their name, that would be super cute. Probably should have put this before the bow, but that's okay. I almost forgot that I wanted to put this in on there. We'll just tuck it underneath and hot glue it down. Hot glue it right underneath there. Use my scissors to hold it down. Back to Dollar Tree I go. <laughs> the wreath hangers, yes, they have them right now. They have them in red. Of course, they had them in, oh gosh, orange for Halloween, but you don't want that for Christmas. But they had some gold ones, so I got a couple gold ones too. And then you could, if you can't find them, maybe if you just see the orange ones, you can spray paint them. They spray paint really easy. Okay, let's cut that little excess jute rope off and I'll hold it up so you guys can see what it looks like. I might put, well, we'll just do those berries. Let's just scrunch them up a little. 
Okay. Let me fluff my bow. I like a poofy bow, not a real flat bow. Oh my, too cute. Look how cute this is. <laughs> I love it. Adorable. Here's the side so you can see what it looks like. You can see that? All the glue hanging from it. We'll clean all that up. Looks just like a little sled and I made it for, I don't know, six dollars maybe if you count everything. Really cheap. Now my E6000 is not all the way dry, so I'm not gonna hang the jute rope hanger on it right now. I'll let that dry. But you could take a jute rope hanger, wrap it around each rung and hot glue it and tie it and then hang it from the door just like that. Too cute. Or leave it on a table. Really cute. All right, guys. I hope you like that. I hope it inspires you. These would make great gifts. You could make these ahead of time. Put their initials on it just like that or a name little name tag on there love it i'm going to be making some of these some more of them super cute where did you get the garden steak the garden steak actually came from dollar general but i think you can get them at lowe's any hardware store but this one yeah dollar general i don't know if they'll still have them this time of year set it by the fireplace yes amy i love it Thanks, Catherine. Thank you to Jerry from Getting Plastered with Jerry. She came up with the original idea, and then I just tweaked it a little bit to make it my own. That's what we love to do. You see crafts and you make it your own. You use what you have. Lisa, love it. Natalie, thanks, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you'll try it. If you try it, let me know. I would love to see how you make it your own and how you uh, make the sled with whatever you have, because you guys might have a better idea than using a garden steak. That's just what I had. All right, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. I am back on tomorrow. Um, craft around the clock, I think 7.45, but I'll post the time, I can't remember for sure. So tomorrow, I'm doing another Christmas craft tomorrow night. So I will see you guys all next time. I hope you have a good night. Thanks again for joining, bye.